Hey friend, Graham here from recordingrevolution.com. Quick video for you today. I wanna help you bring your music to life, bring your tracks to life through the power of automation. Uh, maybe you're newer to recording and mixing, or maybe you've been doing it for a while, but you've never jumped in to the waters of automating. I wanna show you how simple this is and show you how it's really a very critical tool to bringing your song to life, making it jump out of the speakers and not be just a flat, boring mix. So what automation is, is basically taking static things like volume or pan or plug-in settings and moving them in real time and having them move where and when you want them to so the mix comes to life. Today, I'm just going to focus on volume automation, but this doesn't have to be a Pro Tools thing, by the way. You're looking at Pro Tools because that's what I use, but every software has this. Logic, Cubase, Studio One, Reason, it doesn't matter, right? Automation is there. And in Pro Tools, you know, I'm looking generally at the waveform view, but under the track, there's different views. So by default, we're looking at the waveform, or if it's a MIDI track, we're looking at the MIDI notes. But there's different lanes. We can look at the volume lane. Okay, and that's what I'm looking at here is the volume lane. And wherever the fader is, right? So if my volume fader is at minus 12.2 on this electric guitar, this line going left to right is 12 minus 12.2. So that's the volume. If I move the fader up, that line would go up. If I move it down, it'll go down, okay? What's beautiful though, is that you can automate the volume of tracks and you can do that with a pencil tool where you can draw it in. You can do that with some kind of uh, control surface. Uh, I use the Avid Artist Mix. It's give, it gives me eight faders that are motorized and automatable. You just touch them and move them. I, but I used the mouse for a good decade before I bought a control surface. Either way, you can do this in real time. And so what I wanna do is show you why this is helpful. Okay, so here is a song that I was working on and I felt like without any automation, the chorus and the guitars kind of was a little flat. So let me highlight what I did here on the guitars. Let me delete the automation. And here's what it sounds like going into the chorus. Baby, you're a woman and your friends are kids. Even the sun goes down. Even the sun goes down. Right, it's a cool vibe. What I felt though is that coming from the verse to the chorus, it didn't grab me as much as I wanted it to. Remember what you did. Baby, you're a woman and your friends are kids. Even the sun goes down. It should hit, right? It's that really cool bow and the guitars open up. And the parts are played well, but my job as a mixer is to get it to do what I want it to do as a listener. I want it to jump out of the speaker. So in my mind, it's like, well, let's just turn it up for those hits, not just turn up the whole track. The guitars are at a good level, but just those initial hits. So that's what I did as I automated it. And if we zoom in here a little bit, you can kind of see that I'm, f I'm bringing up the volume right on these hits and then dropping it back down and then up again for the hits and dropping back down. So take a listen to what this sounds like with the automation. Remember what you did Baby, you're a woman and your friends are kids Even the sun goes down Even the sun goes down Right? It just feels a little bit bigger. So now I'll take it away. So here it is with it. Remember what you did. Baby, you're a woman and your friends are kids. Even the sun goes down. A nice big hit, but if you take it away. Remember what you did. Baby, you're a woman and your friends are kids. Even the sun goes down. It's just okay. Remember what you did. Baby, you're a woman and your friends are kids. Very simple thing, right? Just bringing up those guitars just for that moment, it really makes it hit a little bit harder. Another example in this song was a part that the guitar was really at a good level for the whole song, but not in this one moment. 
So let me delete this automation and take a listen. There's a guitar that comes in um, here. Kind of slides down and adds another textured palm mute. But take a listen to it in context of the mix and see if you hear it. Oh, you feel anonymous as you write another name on another cup. Didn't tell you I was dropping by when you saw me in the line. When you, you barely hear it, right? So I automated it so I could hear it better. Oh, you feel anonymous as you write another name on another cup. Didn't tell you I was dropping by when you saw me in the line. Right, I just need to hear that little and then I need to notice the first few palm mutes for my ear to pay attention to it, that it's there. Okay, this is something that I call the attack principle. I learned this concept from Kevin Ward years ago for Mix Coach, where you really just need to hear the initial attack, the initial strum, initial transient of a track for your ear to notice that it's there. And then the volume can kind of tuck back down to where it is good most of the time. It's just you need to psychologically know it's there as a listener. And I know it's there because I see it. You know it's there when you're working on your own music because you see it and you recorded it, but the listener will never know if they don't hear it initially. So all I wanted to do today was point your attention to the automation lanes, the volume automation lanes, and the a simple, simple thing. When you're kind of towards the end of your mix, when things are sounding good, and the plugins are there and the levels are there, if you want to bring your mix to life, systematically listen through, and if there are parts that you don't hear that you should, turn them up with automation. If there are parts that just feel flat and need to come to life a little bit, bring them up for a moment with automation and use that simple tool to take a kind of, eh, okay, flat mix, 2D mix, and make it more three-dimensional, make it more lifelike, make it jump out of the speakers. Now, what about you? Are you using automation in your mixes? Are you using volume automation? Are you doing stuff like this? Leave me a comment. Let me know if you are already doing this and how you're finding it to be effective in your tracks. And if you're not, that's great. Start today. Try it out on your next project and see if it does what you need it to do. Now, a little tip for you before we go. Good automation, while important, really should only complement a good arrangement. So if your song feels kind of flat and kind of like boring, Automation, while helpful, can only do but so much. Really, it's probably an arrangement problem. The song might not be arranged very well. It might just be a boring arrangement. That's why you're having a hard time getting the mix to sound exciting. So it really is a thing that you need to do before you even record the song is flesh out a much better arrangement. And this is so critical to getting great mixes and great masters is going to the very beginning stages before you even lay down a single track in your studio. And that's songwriting and arranging. So there's something that I teach called the six steps to a Radio Ready song. I have a free guide. You can download it. Just go to RadioReadyGuide.com. I'll put the link here and it's in the description. RadioReadyGuide.com. It's a simple PDF. Go download it. My gift to you. What this thing is, is it's a map. You take every good song that you've ever heard and you can break it down into six steps. It had to go through all six of these steps before you've heard it. So what I've done is basically reverse engineered the song creation process, distilled it down into six steps, and there's two steps before you even get to recording, and those are songwriting, duh, and yet so many people just phone in a, a mediocre song and expect the recording to be great. It's not, it's just not a good song, it's impossible. So songwriting, very important. And then arranging, which is what a lot of songwriters skip over. They write a song, even if it's a good song, they're like, all right, let's record it. Uh, you got to really stop and land in arrangement mode and pre-production where you're thinking through what instrumentation and where and when in the song. And if this is playing here, or maybe on the left, what's going to be a complement to it on the right? What's the vocal going to be doing here? Is there something I can stick in here that will really fill the gap when the vocal stops down? This is all stuff you do before you ever go into the studio to record. And so arranging is a huge part of it. So that's why I teach these six steps because you could skip one or two of them and think you've got a decent song, but you're wondering why it doesn't sound that great. It's probably a weak application of one of the steps or skipping one or two of them completely. And there's two or three that most people are skipping of the six. Recording is only one of them. Mixing is only one of them. So download the guide. That way you're not skipping any of the steps. It also gives you a bunch of tips and tricks on how to do all six of those steps well. And it gives you a step-by-step -step framework, which I, as a linear thinker, you find useful and helpful. That's why I created it. And maybe you'll find it useful and helpful as well. So you can get your free copy of it. It's an easy read. Just go to RadioReadyGuide.com. Download it, print it out, keep it on your phone or tablet, whatever you like to do. And then use that the next time you are creating music. Thanks for watching.
Thanks for subscribing and thanks for all the likes, comments. I'll see you on another video real soon.